I'm Yash, and uh, today we'll be talking about uh, the Young American Research Journal. Uh, before we go into it, I'd like to just um, thank you all for coming to uh, with us Let's Talk. Um, we'd get, like to give special thanks, thanks to Dr. J um, for giving us this awesome opportunity and allowing us to speak on um, the Young American Research Journal, or YARGE. Uh, we'd also like to thank Coach Rajiv um, for connecting us uh, with uh, UTD and giving us this awesome opportunity. So before we uh, talk about um, exactly uh, what YARGE is, we'd like to go into a bit of background about who we are. Um, so if Pranav and Davis would like to introduce themselves. Um, my name is Pranav. I just graduated from Texas Academy of Math and Science, and I'll be attending UT Austin in the fall. And hi, guys. I'm Tejas. Uh, like Yash, I'm a senior at Plano West Senior High School, um, and I will be continuing to, continuing to attend Plano West. Uh, I'm also I'm Yash Saxena, and uh, like Tejas, I am a senior at Plano West High School. Pranav, Tejas, and I have, are um, students who have been like uh, who've been studying robotics for the past couple of years and learning more about robotics and programming and whatnot. But also possibly more importantly, we also have a good amount of experience with um, publishing uh, academic, researching and publishing academic papers. So for example, um, myself and Pranav in 2016 and, another, and um, a group of other people um, published a paper uh, in, um, in um, the SFF, or the Solid Freeform Fabrication Symposium which is essentially an international meeting, essentially, of manufacturing, where different people um, hear uh, uh, and speak out about new technologies that they have come up with. And um, in addition, we did something very similar in 2019 uh, with myself and Davis and another group of people. And so, as you can see, we have a good amount of experience um, as high schoolers um, writing and researching and presenting our um, academic paper. So now, um, moving on. All right, so that brings us to why we want to start the Young American Research Journal. While we were working on our two publications, we really fell in love with the process of research. We enjoyed the process of delving into a concept and exploring and discovering things for ourselves, which isn't something you do in a traditional high school setting. We also really enjoyed collaborating not only within ourselves, within our publication, but also with our mentor, uh, Coach Raji. Um, he really gave us the um, tools and resources we needed to provide a successful publication. And we got the opportunity to present our publication at, the UT, at UT Dallas, along with the UT SFF Symposium. Um, we were able to present in front of many industry professionals, and many high school students aren't able to really do the process of research and collaborate and present. So we want to give those high schoolers an opportunity to do something similar. So before we get started and talking about what exactly ARGE is, I just want to give you some numbers about youth brain drain. Uh, brain drain could be explained as like the amount of like ideas that are lost just in time. So one number is 7 million students every year participate in fairs that are affiliated with the International Science and Engineering Fair. So 800 projects advance to the International Science and Engineering Fair. So as you can see, there's a lot of projects that are lost in the process and don't get the recognition they deserve. And often most of those projects could have a novel, creative, and innovative idea that showcase youth innovation, but they don't get recognition that they need. So we want to give those ideas the opportunity to showcase their, um, what they've made and show how innovative and novel they are in a community. But we don't want to limit just the science fair. We also want to give any other students the opportunity as well. So that brings us today to what YARGE for the Youth American Research Journal actually is. First and foremost, it's an academic journal that functions like any other. It's a platform for high schoolers that are engaged in the STEM environment and the academic research environment to publish their own work and receive recognition for what they've already done, but also to further engage them and give them a, and sort of an incentive to start working in this environment in the first place. Uh, and just like any other journal, it will exist for anybody to read. Uh, and anybody or any high schooler or any background can publish themselves in it. Uh, in this way, it gives them a platform that doesn't exist currently. Like Yas has already touched upon, uh, ourselves, we were very lucky to not only live in Texas and have you know, access to some of the UC presentations we were able to give, and also an international conference right in our very backyard. 
but not everybody has this platform. Yours is intended to be a universal platform to give every single high school the opportunity. So as far as some of the inner workings behind yours, uh, again, it'll function like any other academic journal. First, uh, any prospective authors will submit their ideas in an article format. I just mentioned this format is a few pages long and it'll be specified on our website. Um, and after it's submitted, it'll go through a rigorous peer review process by other qualified students that are interested in the same topic area, qualified professors and industry professionals, so that they can give feedback and allow you to strengthen your own paper, but also to allow you to understand you know, what parts of your paper may be missing uh, and what parts of your paper are very strong, very novel, and very thorough. Uh, and finally, after the process, we'll be able to publish it within Yard itself in regularly published Okay, hey, so now that we've talked a bit about um, what Yard is, we can, uh, we can go into more about how you guys or how students can be involved in it. Well, so um, like any research paper, um, the process of becoming involved in Yard starts with an idea. And uh, this idea can really originate from anywhere. It can come from science fair, it can come from personal projects that you do as hobbies, or it can even be a class project that you want to improve upon in your own time. Well, so what you can do is that once you've come up with this idea and you've done um, enough research into it, what you can try and do is you can try and convert that into a format of an actual research paper. And what this will do, after you submit that PR, what will happen is that you'll have a twofold effect. One, you'll be able to get your work qualified by um, qualified professionals and other interested students, but also you'll be able to have an online record of all of your articles. Of, or all of your publications, so that your, your ideas don't simply get lost. And then after doing so, what will happen is that you'll become a part of a community of youth scholars. And this community will contain a, a comprehensive documentation of what other students have or have in research. And also you'll be able to get, have connections with uh, relatively um, qualified professors and other interested students. Okay, so now moving on to what Yard's goals are. Well, firstly, Yard um, exists primarily to bolster scientific curiosity. And so what we hope is that by universalizing this process of um, writing academic journals to high school students, what will happen is that more students will become interested in this field and um, hopefully more students will be, um, uh, will be interested in some fields. In addition, um, we hope that uh, this will allow students to become part of the scientific process earlier on. So as of now, the process of publishing an academic paper is strictly, strictly relegated to college students and beyond. And generally speaking, high school students don't really have that opportunity. And so hopefully what YARD will do is it will open, or open um, high schoolers' eyes as to what the actual um, will offer a glimpse into what the world of academia actually looks like, and perhaps um, what the process of submitting a paper actually is. Um, thirdly, uh, this um, yard will plant the seed for future researchers, and it'll do this by, once again, um, offering students a glimpse into what the process of publishing an academic paper is, um, but in addition, it'll also um, uh, show students what's out there and what other students, what other capable students have done, and maybe also open further doors and, and connections. Um, thank you for your time, and we'd be open to any questions. Uh, could middle, can middle schools also write a research paper for YARG? Um, I guess I'll take this question, but uh, I definitely. Um, our idea is that age shouldn't, generally speaking, be any barrier for education. And so long as um, what you write, what you presented to us, uh, um, adheres or um, exceeds uh, what we expect, all adheres or exceeds, then age should never be something that holds you back. So the, the answer is yes, you can, if you'd like to. Okay, thank you. Oh, actually, um, if you'd like, uh, you can go to a yarj.org, that's yarj.org, and uh, if you actually go into the contact tab, um, actually, I can go ahead and show, um, uh, you can actually go into the contact tab, and there's an email right here.
for um, if you'd like to submit a paper. Any other questions can be routed through this Google form over here. So if you have any questions or if you'd like to submit a paper, you can either email this or fill out this form over here. Um, so another question I have is, about, like what, generally what could a research paper be about? Like could it be about like how stuff works? Um, I'll take this question. Um, it's just anything that you're curious about in the world. So anything that is technologically like you're building a robot and you find, or you're working with Arduinos, which is a good example, and you make something that could help somebody. Like in one of my science careers in middle school, someone made an Arduino belt, which could help a blind person uh, by with sensors and vibrations, and they could sense everything around them. So anything that you feel would help the world and really take a step forward and be something innovative that could help somebody. Uh, and I'd just like to add on to this. Um, most likely the paper will be STEM related um, because that is like, that's pretty much what the journal is looking for, STEM related papers that um, innovate. Okay, thank you. Uh, Adit just posted a question in the chat. You talked about people who are versed in specific areas. Um, so the people who review, it would be like the way a typical journal works is a student, when you submit a journal you or an article, you also review other articles that were submitted to the journal as well. So it would be other students who are qualified who've written a similar topic they would review your uh, article, but we also are trying to get industry professionals who would be willing to review these articles as well when we're uh, setting up the arch. Uh, so more clearly to answer your question about it, um, the, like currently the answer is both. Uh, as we get a larger and larger community, chances are that the uh, like the peer review network will be built by other students and then you guys will basically build each other up, uh, but currently and for the foreseeable future, we'll be using both a mix of other interested in students, but also uh, professors and or even undergraduate students that are interested in that area as uh, the beginning now. Oh. So the question is, how is the collaboration on Yard going to work? So collaboration began with the peer review process um, where you as you submit a paper, you will also in turn receive a few other papers that have been submitted by others. Uh, and you'll have the opportunity to provide feedback to them uh, in the same way that uh, like a few of the other students that are engaging in your area or, and or are submitting will provide feedback to you. This is where collaboration happens at the beginning. Uh, and this is pretty much the crux of collaboration about the paper. Uh, because it's not necessarily like a one and done thing because if you decide that your paper uh, and the peer review process also uh, finds like your paper needs a little bit more work, you can come back and have more, more peer review and you can work with other students that are still engaged with it. The idea eventually is that you can actually form connections with the people and it won't just be like an anonymous process. Uh, where like if I was submitting a paper about, for example, the 2019, uh, 2019 publication, which is about a uh, minimum order machine, uh, you know, uh, it's about 3D printing. If I were to submit this paper, then Pranav or Yash could then review my work and then I would get Pranav and Yash's contact and in the future if I was wanting to do more research or if I had a question or anything like that, I could just directly ask Yash or Pranav, hey, what do you think of this idea? Or like, I'm stuck on this, um, what can I do? So that's how collaboration. Um, I, I, I guess I also, this would be, a, now would be a good time to talk a bit more in depth about what, uh, what the peer review process looks like. Um, so in general, um, peer review process works as such. So um, if I would like to submit a paper to a journal, what I do is I first write that paper and then of course I email it to um, the journal or whatever contact they have. And before that, that, um, that article or that paper actually gets published in the journal, it has to go through something called the peer review process. And the way that works is that my paper is given to other, other um, applicants who look at that paper and also deem if that paper is worthy enough 
be published in that journal. And so the way that works, so the way that's replicated here is that if a student submits a paper, what will happen is that that paper will not only go to the, the professionals and professors that they just mentioned, but also other students who are trying to write papers in a similar field. So for example, if you, if you write a paper about um, Arduinos and making some Arduino project, that paper will be peer reviewed by, um, of course, professionals, but also other students who are interested in similar things. Um, and yeah, that's generally how the peer review process works. Um, on top of that, you don't have to write a paper, submit a paper by yourself. You can submit a paper working with other students as well. So there can be multiple art authors for one article. Many of you may have participated in various uh, uh, not only STEM related activities as well as our first Lego League. So we have seen a, a wide range of a, a huge body of research work coming from the students, but uh, it all, like you know, all that work, so much of thorough work and so much of data, which could potentially translate into a, a, a solution that could help the world. It dies if your, doesn't, uh, if your team doesn't go beyond the qualifiers or if your team doesn't advance beyond certain level. Uh, so you could consider submitting your research work done during the first Lego League or any of the other science fair activities to the journal. And it not only it will get reviewed uh, to improve, but also then it becomes a document available uh, for an uh, extremely long time for the um, you know, rest of your peers in the world to refer to as well. Um, so if any of you have uh, participated in FLL or science fair, you know that at least, in, for example, in FLL, at the beginning of the season, you, you have to do some sort of project. Uh, so for, um, for this year, it has to do with sports, and then for the last year, each, each year has a different thing. And so for, like um, Coach RG mentioned, um, if your team doesn't advance beyond uh, the qualifiers or regionals or your science fair project doesn't move on, well, what happens to that six months of research that you've done, right? It just goes to waste. So what you can do instead of letting that idea just um, sink to the background, what you can do is you've already done all this research. You can just compile that into maybe like a two to three page paper and submit that to YARG. And that way your idea, of a novel idea, will remain at the forefront instead of just sinking to the back and being forgotten. Uh, I think that if there's no more questions, uh, we'd like to thank everybody for meeting it out here. We know there's a much shorter presentation. However, uh, I think that we uh, worked a lot and we're really glad that you were able to, you know, come and listen to us talk about yards. Hopefully you guys are interested, but if not, please feel free to send a message uh, to your friend for anybody else that may also be interested. As always, both the email that I have listed in the chat earlier uh, and the website are always going to be up. Um, so if you guys have any concerns or if you're prospective authors that are looking to submit your own papers, you guys can listen to us as well. Um, but I think, yeah, uh, I'll be honest. Who are the people that would, like, not just the students, but the other qualified <laughs> research and researchers and professors who would do that? Like, do you know anybody specific that do that? Uh, we've just started with Yard, so we're looking for a community. We haven't built a community yet, but we will hopefully have a community once we do. So, um, it up and running. Yeah, both the uh, video and the presentation will be available on the website. But yeah, um, if there are no more questions, I guess um, um, that'll be it for today. And uh, we hope to see some of your names show up when we're looking at our submissions. Um, but yeah. Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Yeah.